hello everybody, welcome to Five Idiots. I'm Jimmy Fantastic, my character is Dakar, a human fighter, a crossbow expert kind of fella, and that's me. Hello everyone, I am Elliot the Nom, a level three, level four rock gnome of the, uh, rock gnome cleric of the life domain. I am Thoral Snorp, uh, the Goblin King, the best sorcerer in the entire world. <laughs> I'm Dimitrio of the Axeman, um, I'm a level 4 fighter and I do all the heavy lifting. <laughs> yeah, you guys forgot that Elliot is the force feeder of, uh, of healing <laughs> potions too. Yeah. Fuck on that, brilliant. mate. I ran out of Put your levels. neck back and chug on this, baby. <laughs> I've used all my healing potions. Mm. All right, so uh, where, where do we find ourselves this 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 fine afternoon, gentlemen? So, uh, oh God, let's see. Where, what all did we get into? You guys went and explored more of the catacombs. Um, <laughs> Dimmy, I'm sorry, Jimmy couldn't hit shit. Dimmy almost died. Elliot saved the party. Dato figured out how to breathe the uh, green dragon mist. And now we are back. Uh, we're back in the um, in the manor house, right? Tillich Manor. We got Faps. We've got uh, his man Elon. We've got several man servants uh, in the area as well, and and they've had a nice uh, a nice long rest without uh, without going overnight. So <laughs> take it away, gentlemen. What are we doing? Uh, out of character. Hey. Have I had a chance to read the book yet? The, the read the journal. Yeah, I, we I, we assume that you were um, that while you guys were resting, that's when you were you were paging through for an hour, kind of looking for details. Okay. You'd get up because it's not really remember it's not an overnight thing because it's in the middle of the day and you just got done with an overnight long rest. Okay, so before we make any decisions, I have some information to impart from the group. Mm -hmm. So Laura here, you know, they they set up. She was a bit worried about land rights and stuff, but they got like rights for the land eventually. Blah blah blah. Things went okay. Um, uh, there, there, was, there was this guy that was hanging around. She writes about this guy called Joshua, an archaeologist, who was searching for something. She wasn't exactly sure what. She was worried about him, you know, some land right stuff. But he, he was searching for something, and eventually he found something, and he took her to see the something. And there's not too much in the journal after that, but it was north of here, an archaeological dig. They found some kind of human-made ruins buried underground, something like that. So, so there, there we go. There's something to investigate north, apparently, this dig site, perhaps. Maybe Faps or the Hands know about it, or maybe not. Yeah, but there we go. That's the uh, that's the info. Mm -hmm. so, so also in that journal, you also had note of... I'm sorry, say again, Dato, I apologize. That could be where the tunnels in the rocks uh, lead to. Perhaps, or, yeah. Uh... Yeah, in that journal, you had there was mention of the longer tunnel coming in from, from the... Um, from the entrance to the north, remember? Um, you may not have glanced through it as detailed, so that's some kind of filling in some of those holes. Yeah. So but... similar, you, you, instantly you kind of put two and two together that that may be the same thing because there was a long entrance into a set of caves. There was a down ramp into a lower set of caves, similar to um, what you saw the priest, you know, dog down into. Um, so the, the descriptions are kind of matching up, right? Sure. Super interesting. It's gonna be difficult for us though to like investigate that because uh, whenever we try to sneak, we get ambushed, and whenever we try to investigate something, we see nothing because we're a bunch of dum dums, and uh, <laughs> we're not very good at fighting either. So like, whenever we do get ambushed, we're gonna have to come back here to rest. Which whoa, we're whoa, now whoa! Waiting which... to rest. Yeah, Lock, which we... right. We kind of need a long rest, and we we haven't we can't because of the mechanics yeah. of Dungeons and so Dragons. So we're we're sitting we're sitting here waiting to rest. Yeah. How long? How long? How long? How long have we got till we rest? One long rest every twenty four hours you can have. Yeah, but so. when when was the last rest? A couple of hours ago or something. <laughs> yeah, you you pretty about two to three hours ago. Yes. Mm. Yeah, we we literally woke up, went down the caves, then came back right. Yeah. So. Well, do you want to just head off to uh, the country wizard? We we could we we could I think we could ask Faps mm. if he wants to take all of his himself and all of his men with us 
because you know if we leave them and and little Jimmy as well, right? We don't like leave, we don't take little Jimmy with us into the depths of the caverns, but also we don't leave him there, you know, kind of unprotected, right? So like, so if we all went together, maybe we could all go back to town and uh, and then report to Kalon the turd, and then maybe we could get like you know some more local army or whatever to go with us or whatever. Yeah, I wouldn't feel yeah. comfortable at leaving Faps and his men here to fend for themselves. Exactly. But are you gonna come? Yeah, I, uh, I am uh, still intrigued about investigating something here, but I think that this sounds like a very solid plan. Mm. Where, where is Faps, please, Jackwell? So he's kind of with you guys, right? If he can, he can basically be wherever you want. He's going to be located predominantly in his office area. Um, remember, once you get to the night, and it's uh, it's twenty hundred hours now, so we're looking at around eight p.m. Mm. Uh, they were going to occupy one of the larger bedrooms, as you as you heard earlier. Um, you guys had all asked for separate. I shouldn't say that. You asked for two bedrooms. Uh, Dimitri, I wanted to sleep with Elliot. <laughs> um, Don't blame him. <clears throat> Dimitri, that is exactly how you put it too. I want to, you know, we're gonna. We're, I will only sleep with Elliot. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he does, uh, he's pretty much saved my life a few times, so, um, I feel safe with and him. And you are pinned to him via the, uh, promise rings you now wear as well. <laughs> no, it's, it's Daka, I mean, Daka's, like, a little bit sketchy, isn't he? I'm not sketchy at all, what are you well, talking for, about? For, for, I mean, with um, all due respect, yeah, so he's, he's, the one, right? he's kind of anywhere you want him to be, right? Okay, well, I think we should... The furthest goblin you've ever met. <laughs> I That's think true. we should all go up um, with, I mean, maybe we don't need little Jimmy with us. I guess he's he's safe somewhere right now. I think we should march into uh, Faps's office and then, you know, propose our plan of all going back together. I think this sounds good. Agreed, yeah, agreed. Agreed. Okay, so go ahead. Are you going to go into who's all four of you together? One of you... No, all four of us together. All four uh, together. And just present everything that we just discussed. Uh, okay, so um, Faps' response is going to be somewhere along the lines of, he's not leaving. Um, you know, during thought process, during thinking about this, um, he's already lost one man here. He's, um, he is, he's about 90, 95% sure his brother was lost here. Um you know, things along that line. Um, he now views this more as a responsibility to see it to the end because of those two individuals than anything. He's but not stopping him from coming back and seeing it through with us. Like, it's about taking care of his non-fighting workers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the ones that can't fend for themselves in case we get ambushed or in case this uh this manner get ambushed when when we're not here like yeah it seems pretty dangerous his, for his, them right now his biggest concern is just going to be that right that if he if he bails um he totally agrees that maybe Kalon the third is the way to go with this or uh, getting some local assistance if you guys aren't going to stay um but his his biggest concern is if there's an evacuation process of some kind coming back would allow them to entrench themselves even further. And he also makes mention of, we don't even know where that other ladder leads to yet, if it leads into this. Ha I mean, you know, that there's, he's got considerations for family heirlooms. He's got considerations for all of that. So what I'm hearing, because like none of the arguments are making any sense. So what I'm hearing is that the physical stuff, the stuff, that you have here is more valued to you than the lives of your workers. Well, it's not necessarily about the stuff more than it's also about where my brother fell and where my other man fell. I can't yeah, just simply abandon that, that to... We're, we're coming back to that. We're not abandoning investigating that. We're coming back to investigate it properly with more manpower, more resources and with your people safe from harm back in town. It's a pretty, good, pretty good argument from the goblin. Okay, so give me a, um, 
You can. Or you guys can activate all your sheets, by the way. Because I'm charismatic as fuck. <laughs> you guys can activate your sheets. Yep. All right, perfect. Give me a persuasion roll there, please. All of us are just Daedal. Oh, just Daedal. Gonna roll a four, isn't he? Yeah, let's see how his averages start out for the day. <laughs> 19! Oh, look at that. No, that's a 22, baby. That's not a 19. <laughs> He's plus three on that. Mm. Beneath the miracle. <laughs> so he's right. He's he's not a he's not a um, he's warmed up to y'all. He's not he's he's not trying to be argumentative in any way, right? He's not like oh you guys are cowards. He's not like is <laughs> is is honest. Is is he's and he's going to convey this, right? He's like you know I know I, in in my heart of hearts I know my brother's gone, but we haven't found his body yet, and. You know the the the. Not only does the military man and me want to secure the bodies and bring them back to the families. In this case, ours, eventually. But you know this is now a. This is now a vendetta. This is now a personal vendetta, right? Because he now he also has reason to believe that his aunt may have been caught up in all of this as well. Possibly his cousins, the three daughters, and his uncle. Mm. Um, but he is not, um, he's not going to say no. In fact, he's, he, I mean, I would say that with a role like that, you've definitely assuaged him. Um, but he will want some type of assurances. And I don't mean from you guys. I mean, he wants to figure out. So, okay. So here's how he, here's how I think he'd respond. It's eight o'clock at night, right? 8 PM game time. We obviously can't leave tonight. What we should do is we should scour this manor as best we can and see if we can find anything for the next couple hours that leads down to whatever door, hatch, latch, whatever you found. And then we need to do our best. I'll have my men working on it while we do that search. We need to board up all of these windows from the interior with whatever we can. We need to try to secure this manor. For if we do decide to leave to tomorrow based on what we find tonight, we can leave. And at least we, that gives us a few days because it's a two day journey to get back to, uh, it's a two day journey to get back to Victor. Mm, so that's like four days plus. Four days minimum. Mm. But you know, we could come back with all sorts of stuff, couldn't we, from the town, like um, a yeah. whole military unit maybe. Don't know how yeah. it works. So we're uh, we can definitely help them board up everything and like look through the night uh, for uh, for any clues um, while they rest uh, his people and prepare themselves to leave. Does this sound good to you two fellas, Elliot and Dmitriov? That sounds good. Okay, so give me a um, give me everybody give me one perception roll. Or searching the area and the, and the rounds, <clears throat> and um, okay, Flargo with a twelve, eighteen, Elliot, Daka with a twenty-two. Okay, so Daka, you in in what you assume to be the um, either Laura's or her husband's or somebody's. Um, Aviary, not an aviary. What what is it called? Uh, when you have areas for plants with a, it's not an aviary. Arbitorium. Area and our um, that whatever the hell that's called. <laughs> um, there is a small back office, and in this small back office, it's very easy to miss this little thing, right? It, it seems like it's it's like an area where small things are kept, little pieces of paper, little heirlooms, drawings from the daughters. It's it's nothing out of the ordinary. Um, as far as that's concerned, there's no crazy details or anything in there. But you do find a hollow wall on one of the back walls. It's an arboretum, sorry, by the way. Thank you. Mm. Well. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Anybody home? <laughs> I have found this, uh, I have found a hollow wall here, chaps. 
uh, highly interesting. Uh, I move over to Daco and start knocking around a little bit, trying to find the edges of the hollowness. And yep, so it's a simple high. hollow wall, right? Um, meaning um, it's, it's unremarkable. There's no marks on the floor as far as, like, does something swing out? Does something swing wide? Does, there's no marks there. Um, it is hollow about four feet across, three feet across, so wide enough for a man to pass through. Um, Elliot, you can reach about three feet high, knocking. Um, Daka, you go about five or six feet, and it stops around there, reaching up with your arms. It's about I, the size uh, of a door, honestly. Can, can we can we smash it in? I I, I walk up to it and just hurl my back hands um, in the in the spirit of John McEnroe at <laughs> the wall. All right, give me a strength check. I'm with advantage, and it's going to be a relatively easy strength check, but I still want you to make it. Are you holding your axe when you do this? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to hit okay. all well, the axe. Specify, right? I don't know if you're punching the wall or axing the wall. Well, whatever you hear well, the like tennis players, it's pretty obvious that, uh, that there's going to be some type of a... Ugh. Okay, yeah, so your axe just goes right through it, right? It's, um, it's, the front paneling is made to look like solid wood, but it's very, very thin, and it's got ribs that go north and south, top to bottom, and those are relatively, very, relatively thin as well, and your axe just, just punches right through it. I mean, there's not even, in fact, the way that it hits through this wood, it's, it, it almost knocks you off balance because you're expecting it to make contact, and it just goes through. All right, and then I will peer into the hole. It's dark inside. Uh, I will turn to Eliod and Daedal and have a look in here, guys. <laughs> I, me I first, tip... me first. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> I said me first. Rock, oh. paper, scissors. After, after, no, no, not at all. After you, Flargo's not. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay, so Flargo looks yes. inside. Um, <laughs> once again, so it, what he sees is a room about four feet by four feet. Very, very non, very, very nondescript. It's it's just stone on 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 four sides. Um, nothing in there. Nothing hanging. Can't really see the floor that well. So it's just a room, a blank room. No, go in there. Can you not enter the room? And... Yeah, I want to go in. Flargle or Elliot, with the size of their arms, could stretch their arm inside, or you could just make a larger hole. Dim. I, I will. I will make a larger hole. I'll step back, Flargo Snob. All right, I'm stepping back. And then I'm gonna punch like the rest. of I'm gonna make it as wide as I can the hole in the. Wall. Okay, so you just go to work on this thing, right? You open it up, and inside, indeed, you find the top of a um, of a on the floor. You find a, a flip up um, hatch mm -hmm. made of wood. Dadle, immediately, you recognize it looks exactly like the wood when you climb the ladder. Yeah, Looks I'm, like the uh, other go, side I'm of the go, same type of wood, same beam. I'm going in to try and pick the lock from this side. I'm sorry, say again? I'm going in to try and pick the lock from this side. Okay, so looking at it, it does not look to have been disturbed in quite some time. There is a small layer of dust, no footprints. Um, as you kind of move things around a little bit, it's not like it's overly rusty, um, the metalworks. But there's a little bit of creak to it, and it kind of it doesn't snap. But you know how when something is has been fixed in place for a long time, and you just kind of move it, it just kind of jars before being able to move. Go ahead and pull out. So on your character sheet, you should have your thieves tools. Click on that, left click, and then give me a roll for that. Mm, I would say, wait a second, Flagel Snap. Do you think it's a good idea if there hasn't been moved for a long time? Like, do you think it's a good idea? Maybe the people who built this aren't the people who are there now. Right, and so maybe, maybe they don't even know where this leads or whatever. So like maybe, maybe we should. That's just... why we need to find out where it leads. Well, I mean, if it looks like the one that you thought it was. Yeah, it should be the one uh, I tried to enter from before. Yeah. Do we have to know where it leads? Isn't that good enough for everybody that it, you're pretty sure it's the same one? We could send little Jimmy down the catacombs to tap on the door from the other side. And if we hear a noise, we know it's the same one. Wow, Elliot. 
You're a monster. Uh, He's proved himself the greatest fighter out of the five of us. You are a monster. Bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Oh my god, Demetrio. <laughs> it's, it's a horrible idea, but I love it. Right there, dude. Little Jimmy's hand goes in the air. He's like, I'm in, dude. I'm fucking in. No fucking way. No, you are all monsters. No, no, Doc, I can do this. No, I can no, do this. It's, it's okay that you can do it, little Jimmy. Just, but... just, give, me a, just give me a torch. No. I'll be right back. No, no. No, little Jimmy. You stay here. Wow, these guys are scumbags. <laughs> wow. All of a sudden, Doc has taken a little liking to Jimmy, huh? That's yeah. Well. well, yeah, try, try and unlock it if you want. I guess you can lock it. You can lock it. Like, if you, if you unlock it with Thieves' Tools, can you then re-lock it back or not? Not without the key. That's what so I'm what he's going to do is he's going to undo the tumbler, basically. Yeah, so I'm thinking, is that worth it? Like, It's not like a padlock, right? Mm. I mean, we could, we, we could, all, like, if we open this, we could always set a trap uh, in here. Like, this is a very easy room to to set a trap in, right? Um, the thing is that the lock might, as, as Daka suggests, the lock might be keeping the mana safe for now. You know? All right. Yeah, but hang on, hang on. All right, so if the mana and nobody in the mana knows of this trapdoor, then somebody probably has the key to it that is a danger to the manor anyway, right? In fact, at, at those words, right, Faps kind of comes around the corner from all the commotion, right, of Dimmy knocking holes in his house. <laughs> and, and, and Elon's with him. And he kind of peers around the corner and sees you guys, you know, and he, he's not pissed or anything. He's just, he's amazed, quite frankly, that, you know, not that you found it, but that he did not find it, that they haven't found it in all this time. And he just looks at you and goes, this... This yeah, was my I aunt's. This. Found this. this was my aunt's sitting room. We didn't even think anything of it. Was your aunt's sitting room? Say again, Dim. It, it was your aunt's sitting room. So this. Yeah, tiny... this is where we found a whole bunch of her. She had. This is, in fact, Elliot. This is where we found her journal. Oh, interesting. So how did you get through the fake wall? No, no, no. This little office. In the arboretum, no, the room to which the wall, is, the room to which the fake room is attached. Uh, yeah. The fake room is nothing. Yeah, the but... fake room is literally a little four by four, if you will, a box. Okay. So, wild speculation here. She, the, she had three kids while she was here, and she kept going on in a journal about how happy her husband was and stuff. What what if the kids were this Joshua guy and she's been sneaking down the tunnels to you know they've been sneaking or he's been sneaking down the tunnels to come and visit her? So are you are you insinuating we've got a love triangle, Elliot? Maybe, well, yeah, more like a love sort of you know um, V shape, you know. I you know I, I'm not suggesting a third a third side, you know. <laughs> I I'm not sure how relevant it is, but. But I you know I just got that impression when she was when she was writing in a journal. You know. mm. So did you say this out out loud in front of Faps? <laughs> um. <laughs> say it in no. Goblin, Elliot. What do you do? You speak Goblin? What the flippers! I can't speak Goblin. I'm the only person here who can't speak oh. Goblin. Even <laughs> Faps speaks Goblin, Dagger. <laughs> I'll keep these thoughts to myself for now. You should learn Fab Goblin. You should, goblin? you should learn Goblin, Elliot. Um, How do we figure out that Fab speaks Goblin? I, 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 I don't know. I, perhaps he doesn't. I'm just annoyed that all of you can speak Goblin and I can't. <laughs> Does Jimmy speak Goblin? Does Dimitri yeah, yeah. speak Goblin? Yeah, I'm pretty they sure. All, they all speak Goblin. But no, I keep these thoughts to myself. Um, and I realize that they're, you know, probably, you know, not relevant. I, 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 de I designed to share them with my, my, my fellow adventurers at some point. Okay, I, I figured that might <laughs> that might be where you go. There. So the internal musings of Elia the Nam as he's putting <laughs> putting together the journal, what he's found, you know, try, trying to figure out when, when you know, he's, he's going down. He's putting together the pieces that DACA perhaps should be, right? <laughs> I've, I've solved it. Yeah, I, I do not speak Goblin, by the way. Do, do you do not? You... No. What's oh. your extra language then? No, I just have common. That's it. Yeah, I, su I suggested that we all speak. We all speak Goblin, so we can speak. We can speak in private. I thought it was a good idea, but then 
I guess we can't. I've got a goblin though. I can speak goblin to Flagle Snap. I'll say, hello Flagle Snap, how are you feeling today in goblin? <laughs> hey Jimmy. <laughs> no, hey Doc. I'm pretty good now. Oh, that's I good to know. You. I'm I up to you. no good. How are you? Ah, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Let's hope I... this pisses off all these idiots who can't speak goblin eh? Yeah. <laughs> can I laugh hysterically? <laughs> can I search? Can I search this room for a key? Not, not before I share a confused and suspicious glance with you. <laughs> so, um, in the there's literally <laughs> you're here with you're here, okay. So inside the little, um, are you talking about in the little secret room you found, or the the office area? I was well, I was talking about the office area. But... Yeah, there's nothing really remarkable of the office area. You feel free to search, but there's nothing. It's just. Most of it's been gone through already, as mentioned um, by uh, by Faps. But now you see Faps like he's tapping everywhere, right? He's out in the um, in the arboretum. He's tapping on areas that aren't glass. He's tapping floors. He's you sent him down a little bit of a, a rabbit hole of distrust of this area now. So, what do you think, guys? Should should we should we try to? Uh... Confirm this is the same thing, or should we just like try and uh, and could say that to Faps as well? Could say that to Faps, like include Faps in the discussion. Like, should we try and make confirm this is the one? I mean, or does it really matter if it's the particular one, right? It's obviously going down there, isn't it? Like, do you know what I mean? It's I don't I, think we I have to confirm it personally. I suppose that if we're leaving at first light anyway, it, it's and we're coming back to clear out these cultists, perhaps with an armed guard, then. It, you know, it's, it doesn't matter too much if we do open it. I have to admit, there... when I was in the catacombs, my natural gnome sense of undergroundness suggested to me that we hadn't travelled far enough north for this to be the same door, but I could be wrong about that. Is, um, is there any way of telling which side the door is locked from? You could tell which side the door opens to. Remember, it opens... Data was trying to push the door open up, so it would open into the room that you're in. But we don't know which side it was locked from, because uh, so we don't know if someone's in the mansion and they've locked it, or someone. No, you could you couldn't tell that. You could lock it from either side. Right. And does this one open up the same as the other one? And no, there's no key in it. I take it. <laughs> no, no, there's no there's no key sitting either. Otherwise, when Tato went to even look at it for his lock picking <laughs> skills, he said, "Hey guys, key." <laughs> is there is there like a, a latch or a deadlock or anything on it like on this side? No. Hmm. It's there's no other way to secondarily secure the door if that's what you're looking for. Yeah. Well, if if it opens inwards, we can just put something really heavy on top of it. Yeah, like, yeah. definitely could do that. Without a doubt, you could do that. Oh well, yeah. Well, should we uh, should we have a look then? Let's go. It's it's so strange. Why does the door open into a room that has nothing in it that's just closed yeah can that I, can cannot get into the wall exactly okay so ellie immediately your mind pings for a second what is the opening um year on the journal well that there isn't one it's interesting so in the the first the the two the, the two starting entries uh, the second one is 1983 but the first one has no date which is suspicious so that's 20 years, 20, 40 years ago, right? Yeah, the 1983 on, yes, the second entry, yes. Oh, yeah, is it, we is just, it I just keep the same year so we're not flluffing makes, around makes with all sense. that. Makes sense. Makes sense. What a quinky thing. Good. So, um, I mean, I knew the PC was old, but him being 2,000 years old, that so seems about, you, that seems about you know, right. Kind of putting things together, Elliot, it's like, well, okay, so was this your thinking, right? Was this tunnel and hole here before they built the manor? Did they build it on top of it? Did this get built afterward? You know, where is the where is the timeline for that? Since you had the dates of the journalist to when they actually arrived. Sure. C can I can I inspect the fake wall? Like, has this wall been constructed? Uh, like after the rest of the house like is it when it where it joins to the non-fake wall how how is the join does it look smooth so it's it... it's on interior hinges it's and on it, hinges. it yep the, the... so and yeah so on the so the door would have opened inward 
Oh, oh, it is a, oh, it's a door. It actually was a door. Oh. Um, had, had, had Dimmy just given it a really good firm shove, it probably would have opened. Oh, well. But okay. Dimmy knocked the living piss out of it. That makes more sense <laughs> then, to be fair. It, it would have taken its, it's, um, it's, it's got like a built-in ridge in the door itself that fits into another notch. So once it, it swings pretty freely, but then once you lodge it in, it stays secure. Okay. Well, that, that ends my, you know, investigation along those lines. Now I've realized it's a door. I'm content. Mm -hmm. What, to go through the trap door? Should yeah, we, I mean, um... I... Should we just tell Faps to secure it behind us when we go down there, or should we leave it open for now? I, I thought we were only like confirming that it was the same trapdoor. I mean, I'm I'm happy to go down. But... Well, oh, wait, so, guess... Jimmy, they're they're talking about the door to get into the room that you knock down. Yeah, I'm talking about the. And I think door. you're talking about the hatch. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about the hatch. Let's open the hatch. Well, Dade, I I think Flag will. Flag yeah, will. I think try. Should try and open the hatch. Yeah, have true. a look. And then, depending on what you see, we'll decide whether we go down it or whether we secure it. Sounds good. Yep. Or both. Okay, Dadle, is that is that what you're gonna do? Yeah, I'm very I'm itching to try and open. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you are. <laughs> um, I also sent you a message in comms as well. Um, go ahead and open your character sheet and uh, and give me left click your thieves tools, and then it'll say uh, I believe it says skill check. It is a skill check or, or tools check. Yeah, sorry. Uh... Or use thieves tools. Okay. <laughs> nope. Okay. Yeah, you can't get it open. Um, it's in your investigation of the lock. In your um, in in your assessing of the lock. It's a pretty, it's it's not a common lock. It costs some money to put on this uh, on this hatch. Wait, wait, wait a second. Before you say anything else, I wanna check something. Don't. What was that sound? Uh. <laughs> uh, while he's while he's doing that, I'm gonna walk over to Elliot. I'm gonna crouch down on one knee, and I'm gonna whisper. Oh, I wanna do this. I'm gonna whisper in his <laughs> ear, and I'm gonna say, <laughs> "I think what we should do is we should." I'm like... gonna create an illusion of the fact that I have opened the door. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn to Elliot, and I'm gonna say. What I think we should do is we should get like a chest or something put like way down the door um, to like leave the weight on it because I want to see if it's still there in the morning. Like I want to see if someone from the house is moving it as in someone in the house is using it. And if not, it's going to keep out whoever is trying to try and come in the door. It hasn't been used for ages though, has it? But. It is a good idea to put something on there. Well, if we can't open basically. it, what, what else can we do? It's, yeah, it's yeah. a good suggestion. I, I was going to ask Dimitri of if, you know, you could continue, you know, use of your axe to, uh, you know, in, oh, yeah. in lieu of being able to uh, <laughs> yeah. un unlock the trapdoor, you know, yeah, give, it a, <laughs> give it a bit of a... Okay, so if if, some... if we ahead. want to leave the trapdoor intact as, as a form of defense, then obviously that doesn't work so much. But we could still put a heavy object over the opening, I guess, but it's not oh, as nice as open the trap we, itself. Okay, so we'll just smash it open, yeah, if we can. If, if you if you Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and smash the back doors in. What? Then that will alert okay, them so... to the fact that we found it and stuff, wouldn't it? So like they might not know that where this leads, right? Like that's the thing. They might not know where this leads at the moment. And they obviously they might have tried to open it and can't open it, and like because no one's been through here recently, so like right though, how how long does it look like for years or months or? 
Could there's a layer of work there, what, what, what's happening i'm sorry i'm not following what Dimmy's trying to do there are too many doors we're talking about the trap door uh, smash the trap, the trap door, door. Trap just door. just yeah just no break it th i'm gonna i'm gonna tell him to stop doing that like uh while exam while trying to open it um i uh, noticed that it is the same door mm. like that i have tried to that i tried to open from the other side so while i failed to open it um I, it is the same door, so we know where it leads. So right. it's definitely safer to not smash it in. Okay, okay. so then I, I guess that we, we cover it like with some sort of cabinet or something. Yeah, and play, we, we could place a, like a poison trap uh, hanging uh, like in a... Jesus, they don't open it. <laughs> poison pours over them. Where, where, where you get the poison from? We can craft it. Magical poison. Or acid. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Dadel. <laughs> I'd also you... like to know about the kind of trap you're going to make that when a trap door opens, the poison pours on them. <laughs> but it's just the wily kind of shit. It's just a simple straw. Like you, you hang like a kettle uh, from the from the ceiling, and then like if someone, if like that, if the door opens, like. The kettle, the, the string gets drawn and the kettle tips over and poison pours out. Like, that's the simplest trap you can create. Can I spend an hour using my Tinker's tools to create such a trap? I don't know if you could create a trap with your Tinker's tools. Um, I, I created the mechanical school, a trap, which is easy. <laughs> yeah, no, I, well, I'm just trying to think of... We just get the kitchenware that they have in the kitchen, and we use whatever's there. With like, magical gonna, acid. What, magical what acid flag or from your acid splash cantrip. Let's yeah. make... Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, but then if he uses that, then it, they'll just pass the dexterity check, though, won't they? They will, but I mean, not if there's, not if there's a bucket <laughs> full. Like, that's just a little... Like, he can do that every six seconds, right? Every six seconds, he can produce enough... That makes Is he gonna sit like, there while you guys leave? Ow. So he can just pump out, <laughs> pump out <laughs> tons of acid. <laughs> Similar to what he was doing with that little thing in his lap earlier. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Here. <laughs> okay, so um, if you look in the arboretum, there's there's some crates of some uh, um, soil, dirt, you know, heavy stuff. There's some large <laughs> pots. Um, there are things you can put on top of this to make it. I mean, because you got to remember. You know, there you go. There's. You got to remember that whoever wants to open this, if they have the key down below, they would have to use basically one hand to push up. You know, above them, hmm. and get this whole thing to kind of. You know, it's not as. It's not as simple like oh, you know the you know. So if you get exactly. enough weight on that, you get you know force in their face. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> how, is there, how about a cauldron full of poison so that if they if they <laughs> actually <laughs> somehow move it yeah. it'll spill everywhere anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah then we don't even need the straw yeah <laughs> so what are you guys gonna do let's, let's keep rolling here we're, we're, we're contemplating this way too much <laughs> Oh, I, I'm okay with the cauldron full of acid. Like the more, the more poisonous fluid, the better. <laughs> That's what he says to all the girls. I asked Matt, do, do you have a large cauldron available in the kitchen for, for cooking that kind of thing? We could get a, a a pan or a cauldron of some kind. He's listening to this conversation. Just he's kind of. You can kind of see that he's like, these are the guys that I was fighting with down below. <laughs> these <laughs> mental geniuses. <laughs> he just goes, you know, why don't we, well, we're leaving. I was going to say we could put it, we can put a man to watch this, but why don't we just put an extremely heavy weight on top of the door? Perhaps mm. that is the best way to proceed. Yeah, okay, let's do that. That way, that way we won't harm the one trying to invade your castle. <laughs> We'll do that. We'll put something heavy on it, Fats, and then we'll put a cauldron full of poison on top of that. 
<laughs> are, are we sure we can produce the poison uh, quickly enough in sufficient quantities? Is that yes. allowed? I mean, you know, sufficient quantities. To fill the cauldron. <laughs> yeah, he can breathe. He can breathe like poison fire, can't he, Flargo? Yeah. And we can and we can fill a thing with it, and it will stay there and not dissipate. It's magic. Yeah. Don't overthink things, Elliot the Nom. Flagel is a powerful <laughs> poison Elliot's, sorcerer. Elliot's, Elliot's along the right course here. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that. Uh, I'm not sure that that Faps would appreciate you guys filling a poison cauldron, <laughs> you know, set up to fall on the very first person who may come up a door in his home. Yeah, <laughs> that's I, uh... the thing. He doesn't want this person in his home. But if they're an it... intruder, obviously. So he grabs he grabs a couple of men and they go out and they come back in with an extremely heavy trunk. Okay. And he looks at uh, he looks at Elliot and he goes, "This is full of uh, a whole bunch of our uh, uh, books and farming books and documents cauldrons. and did you say cauldrons? <laughs> no cauldrons. And they place it on top of that thing and this and it takes two men and they're. You know, they look like a couple of old ladies at the airport, right? Trying to move the big trunk. <laughs> That's how heavy this thing is. And they and they drop it on top of the door. And it almost covers the entire door from side to side. But it extends about a foot on either side as well. Okay. Well, that's good enough, isn't it? We don't need to have a, a convoluted even, poison. You know, trunk. even if somebody from below were to chop the door up with a single hatchet or something and get through that, there's now still... Mm. That seems sufficient. Yeah, and then um, he also orders his man to go get some wood from outside, and they're gonna um, nail closed from our side the the door that Dimmy has has uh, mm. destroyed. Good. Good. All right. <clears throat> so we're heading back to um... Victor, the country wizard. The country wizard. Well, Kalon deterred. Nothing left to do here, is there? More or less, like, well, I mean, we can help them a bit, right? The boarding things up and, like, just generally getting a night's sleep. Yeah, right? but that's we've, the... we've done that during the night. Yeah, yes, yeah, so that's... Right, onward. Is that all good? Yeah, you meet a jackpot. Oh, I'm sorry, thank you. Wrong button. So the manservants are uh, are boarding up um, the both from the interior and the exterior, some of the door, some of the windows that haven't been un nailed yet there's certain wings of the of the home that just haven't been really touched from that standpoint um then they set up a shop in one of the uh, first first floor bedrooms where they will now sleep they show you guys you asked two bedrooms earlier you could all be in one bedroom if you want um they show you guys two bedrooms in the same area as them you're relatively you're relatively confident that you know, if anything goes on, they'll, they'll post guards through the night. He's sure that one of you guys will probably be awake for a little bit of it, too. Yeah, I'll stay awake. Good. Good? Yeah, yeah, it's all good, yeah. All right, good. So, um, next morning comes and goes. Next morning arrives, I should say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is where we leave. No, so the morning doesn't go. Yeah. So um, we'll six a.m. arrives. The the, the 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 cock crows for Jim. <laughs> uh, the cock crows, uh, and it's a completely uneventful night. Completely uneventful night, right? Mm. Um, the the uh, the man servants come and check on you on occasion. Um, you guys during your your two hour watches apiece, each of you comes out, goes back inside, and on you know, literally nothing happens in the night. I eat some mushrooms. I am bored having stayed awake all night. Mm. Right, I say we just say again, Elliot. I said I eat some mushrooms. <laughs> That's right. Elliot will not partake of their food. He doesn't like the red food. Yeah. After after tucking into the boar, he was totally fine with that. <laughs> Giant boar. Um. Right. So should we just get going then? First thing in the morning then, eh? Yeah, so um, at this point, with um, with Daedal and his, and his, his I'm sorry, Flargo Snurp and his speech, um, seeing that there is actually a 
I don't want to call it a secret door, but behind a secret door is an entrance into the house from below. Um, Faps is now pretty convinced that at the very least, he's got to get his men out of here. So he's going to join you and head back to Victor with you. Glorious. Pretty. Good up, Faps. So how many people are traveling with us? Hey, you, we'll just say 10. We'll just say that he's got, it's him, it's Elon, and we'll say eight other manservants. Okay. Let's There's go. still one other um, thing that you need to consider. You still have two prisoners. Oh, yeah. Let's bring them with us. Yeah, oh, yeah, we're definitely bringing No, I figured you'd bring them with you, but just I just want to make sure that that's still in your... Put them in your... on one of the wagons. And I'll sit on the wagon next to their uh, his sacks. Do not kill them, Flagel. <laughs> okay, so um, so um, Elon, Elon and um, and Faps have their own horses. Um, they do have a couple of draft horses that they can hook up to a couple of wagons, and you can wagon it back if you guys like. Definitely. Yeah, that seems a good idea, doesn't it? Yeah. Let's wagon it back. So I'm Faps gonna... takes a takes a takes a look back at the house. Right, he's he's just. He's a little bit, you see in his, he doesn't like leaving. He just, he hates the idea of leaving, but it's the right move. Of course it's the right move. It was my idea. <laughs> it wasn't, but I'm taking credit. <laughs> You're taking credit for what? For the idea to leave. You convinced him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, the first half day is uneventful, right? The first half day gets you back to the crossroads. Um, you see, you find more of the boar bones, right? Other people have taken advantage of the meat that you left behind. Mm. Um, it's, it's, you know, there's, there's nobody camping there or anything, but it's, you know, it's, again, it's an uneventful trip. Did you want to just take, is there anything anybody wants to do or do you want to take the day and a half and you're back to Victa? Yeah, I think we should just try and get back here. We've got plenty of evidence. Just, uh, just get back to Victor. We never got any carrots. Yeah. Say again? Carrots. We ne we've, we've got the carrots. There weren't any carrots. Oh. We tried. I mentioned carrots multiple times. <laughs> so just back to Victor then? Yeah. Okay. So a day and a half journey. It's very simple. Um, some simple conversation between you and, um, and Faps and, and Elon reveals that he indeed was a member of the military. In fact, him and Dmitriev, I don't want to say they hit it off like, you know, best of friends, but there's a commonality in there. Um, you know, at times, uh, you know, Dmitriev shows off his riding skills on, uh, on Faps's horse a little bit. It's been a little while since, since, uh, Dmitriev has been on his horse, obviously. But yeah, you make it back to Victa in, a, in an uneventful, uh, uneventful trip. Little Jimmy will not shut up the whole way, right? He's like, I just can't believe we're going back, man. There was, there was still stuff to do back then. You guys just left, man. We got to go back. You're taking me back with you, right? No. No, it's too dangerous for you, little Jimmy. And like Jimmy's little eyes well up, Daka. They, I mean, this, this kid's been through a lot, right? But Daka, I mean, you, I killed two men. You, you did good. You you did. You shouldn't have had to do that, Jimmy. So, but you're gonna be safe at home for a few years. Can you years guys see here. the map? Um, is that visible to you guys? Yep. Okay, I wasn't sure if I had to pull you in. All right, so you come you come in via the north road as usual. Um, the guards immediately recognize you there. It's very simple. They know who you are. Kalon the third is as as has introduced you. Um, the rowdy gnome Elliot is off to your right there. If you can see it on the map. Yeah. Um, the seat of the government where Kalon's office is here. Demi, move your thing so I can see what you're covering. <laughs> That's the... <laughs> I'm like, when did I put Demi G on the map? Um, the quad skull is located right there. Uh, Daka, the Rothwell house where you have your safety deposit box. Mm. And then, of course, the Tower of the Country Wizard. Mm. Right, so I think we should go head straight to Kalon the Turd and uh, report to Kalon before the Country Wizard or what? Yeah, well, Kalon hired us, right? The, mm. the Country Wizard is just extra. Okay, so you arrive at the seat of the government there. What are you doing? So, 
kind of explain to me what you're doing with little little Jim. Tell me what you're doing with these prisoners. Give me a give me a give me a a quick ten seconds on how you're going to handle this. All right. Well, we can just I'm say a little Jimmy. Whispering in the ears the entire way back. I'm whispering in the ears of the prisoners that I'm going to gut them. <laughs> God, fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Um, so what were you going to say, Daka? So what, what, what about, Fap? is Faps going to be with us? What about his men? Is, is he going to... Yeah, you guys are riding, you're basically riding, we'll just say you're coming through this gate, and now what's the decision-making process? Right, so he can say, little Jimmy, run home. You know, because he's, he's safe now, right, in the in the city. He can get he can get back from here, he can get home from here. Uh, and so he can say, right, he's safe now, little Jimmy, you know, but uh, keep out of trouble. And what one day you'll be a member of the Grey. <laughs> so that's little Jimmy taken care of, and then uh... <laughs> that's him done. <laughs> that's him done. Off you go. Off you toddle. Um, right then, we've got Faps and his men. Right, so I guess so. Faps, if Faps joins us, uh, we, we'll go and speak to Kalon the Turd. Kalon the Turd, and then uh, I don't know if Elon wants to take him in somewhere. Maybe stop at the Rowdy Norm or something. Um, and we'll go and so we'll go and currently, we'll Elliot's the only one allowed in the Rowdy Gnome, currently. But I, I invited uh, Dimitriov in that one time. Yes, but I mean, you're the only one with a room is what I should have stated. Oh, okay, okay. Mm. I'm happy to give up my room for the night if anybody wants to stay there. Well, I mean, it, it, the, the Rowdy Gnome's like a pub, isn't it? What, um, what time are we on? We'll say, let me let me pump it. We'll say noon. We'll say you got it because it's another day and a half. Yeah, so they they won't need a room. Like they yeah, can just go and have a drink. Right? Yeah, yeah, just go and have a drink, and then we'll we'll go on with Faps to uh, speak to uh, Kalon deterred. Should we uh, buy them a beer? Okay, so buy where are you guys going here? So I'm hearing a beer. I'm hearing taking men into the gnome. Yeah. No, just. Let them <clears throat> let every all of Faps' men, except for Faps, go into the pub and chill out. We'll come and get them in an hour or two. Little Jimmy's going off to Little Jimmy's house. Um, Dak has ushered him away, and then us or Faps and the prisoners are going to go to uh, Kayla and the Turds. Okay, so are, are you taking them into the rowdy gnome, Elliot? I'll show them to the Rowdy Gnome. <laughs> okay, so Elliot, you walk in. You 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 walk into the Rowdy Gnome, right? It's 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 this awesome, amazing. I mean, it, it literally reminds you of home. As you remember, it's a um, it's a uh, it's owned by the sister of your um, of your mentor at at uh, at the University of Edin Gnome, right? And um, when you walk in. You see another familiar face. Ooh. And uh, the proprietor of the Rowdy Gnome kind of looks at you and points at you and with a very solemn face kind of, and, and, and the individual turns around and you see another gnome. And I recognize this gnome? You recognize him from being from the University of Edin Gnome. You don't know him personally. Um, he... <laughs> Why are you laughing, Jim? No reason. Um... He is, uh, he is from... He is from the university itself. He is, he is, he is a master of the Platinums. Ooh. He's one of the head honchos back there. Big, big, big time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um... I direct the um, um, Elon and his men to the bar. I, I give a wave to the, the barkeeper behind the bar. And then I approach the uh, the gnome from um, Edin Gnome. And um, <laughs> offer, my, offer my introductions. I say, hello, my, my name is Elliot. I studied Edin Gnome. I am a, uh, I, I am a I am, you know, ranked copper. You know, what, what brings you to Victor? So he looks at you, <clears throat> right? And he's he's dressed very similar to you from a from a standpoint of, of his belongings. Though he has instead of a, a copper, 
uh, uh, Coggy. He's got a platinum one, right? It's beautiful. He's got a big set of steely goggles on his face, similar to yours. Instead of a, a uh, uh, instead of a metal, uh, we'll call it a hat on him. He's got he's got more of a red fez, right? And it and it he looks at you really quick. His <laughs> eyes are are red, right? Not like red in color. They're um, almost like he's having an allergic reaction, right? He goes. How do you people deal with this above ground? If my hay fever is killing me, holy shit! <laughs> and, he, and he and he pulls out a, 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 a handkerchief and he kind of wipes his nose and he and he and he, and he rubs off his goggles and he pulls out a scroll, very very um, official looking scroll, and he goes, <clears throat> Ellie the Nam. He looks at you and he nods. Elliot Denam. Uh, that is I. <sighs> we regret to inform you that your mentor and friend at the University of Edenom, Drothrig Cobblefoot, has begun his journey to Nomoragan to join the Chief Engineer's Council of Nod. He passed from this world peacefully and asleep on the 24th day of the hush with his family surrounding him. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Do not feel regret nor sadness regarding the suddenness of his passing, as he wished only for his closest of family to know of his medical condition that took him to the next phase of his journey. As is the tradition for our culture, Master Cobblefoot will be placed in stasis, and his bodily vessel will lie in state at the University of Edenome for one year. Your presence, as requested, as is tradition, for the internment within the vein. The formal ceremony is to occur on the 24th day of the hushed, 2024 at dawn. Per Master Cobblefoot's final declaration, your presence is also requested. <coughs> your presence is also requested for the ceremony of preparation to occur seven days prior to his internment beginning at dawn. We offer our most sincerest of condolences <laughs> in the loss of your mentor. His impact at the university and within the settlement of Steelbury could not possibly be overstated. Sincerely, Master Rolock Don Knackle, Master of Platinum's Director, University of Edenholm, Steelbury. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm shook by the news. Um... Master Cobblefoot was an old known, but he's still sort of known to me. Um, may may Master Cobblefoot's phase transition be swift and take him to the place that he needs to be. Uh, thank I'm you for sorry, being this, to this to me. I purposefully covered my screen so I couldn't see anybody's reaction. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I was dying. I will, of course, be available to a, to attend the events described. Ma Master Cobblefoot also left you a private letter that I've been asked to give to you as well. Thank you. And uh, can you just remind me of the dates, please? I'm mentioned. going to be giving you both letters. It's going to be the 24th of the Hushed, roughly 11 months from now. 2024. Yes, 2024. A year from now, as I mentioned. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Stop. Thank you very much. He pulls out another, um, another um, uh, scroll case. This one uh, finely, finely um, carved wood has copper um, uh, caps on both ends of it. And then inside you find this scroll as well. I... So 
What is your, um, I'll, I'll let you read that real quick. What are you guys doing outside? <laughs> just chilling, I guess. Say again? Just chilling, I guess. There's not much, not much to do, is there? Okay, so little Jimmy, you know, he's he's looking at you. He's looking back. <laughs> he's looking back, and and he, he he goes off about ten feet, looks back, kind of like, "Are you sure?" <laughs> then he goes another fifteen, twenty feet. You're still he's still in his vision. He's running off the road this way, right? And he but he looks back two or three times, and finally he turns back around. He kind of hangs his head a little bit. He kicks a rock on the on the on the road, and he just keeps walking on. Um, Little Jimmy. Faps looks at you. He goes, "Isn't that your kid?" <laughs> no, it's just some random, just some random kid followed us. <laughs> you telling me that random kid followed you from here? Yep. 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 We didn't expect anyone to be, you know, following us for nefarious purposes. So we didn't, we didn't really uh, bother checking behind us, and then. This little kid just randomly uh, tagged along. That kid's bolder than I thought. Mm. That's why they call him the Rock. <laughs> so, um, Elliot, I would assume that you're gonna. So, I know you're reading that, but I'm assuming you are going to um, give the guys try to get them into your room or try to get them another room. Yeah, I I I go up to the uh, the, the soldiers at the bar. Uh, is Nam Foodle on the bar, or is it a... Yeah, a she's always... Uh, she's, okay. It's amazing how often she's there, right? She's like Norm from Cheers. <laughs> so I, I, I greet her. I'm tired. You know, I'm... Uh, my, my face isn't what it was. You know, my the look on my face isn't what it was before I before I left. She, you know, she sees the... You know, the you know, we've been through a bit, and I say, you know, Nam Foodle, greetings. Do you have... Do you have any lodgings for my, for my compatriots here? We can definitely, I mean, you know, you just see it. I mean, it's, it's her brother who passed away as well, right? Um, oh, so yeah. You can just, condolences. Of course. No, I figured you did all that. I'm just saying you did. There's a reaction here. She knows how important you were to, to her brother. And she knows, you know, he, he basically said, you know, take care of you as if, you know, you were her own, so on and so forth. Of course, they may stay here. She'll food and board them. She will take care of these folks. And, and knowing the gnomish culture, I mean, they're going to be they're going to be taken care of like kings. In fact, they're you know they're well taken care of already, but not like here at the Rowdy Gnome. There we go. That, that's good to hear. Um, and and yeah, my 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 deep condolences um, on on the loss of your brother. Um, you know, he was he was like a brother to myself, as 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 you're probably aware. He will be sorely missed, and and I hope his you know journey to the next phase is a, is a pleasant one. I, I understand you have some items that he bequeathed to me. Yep, she um, she hands over a large, uh, well, large is, is relative to you, probably about two feet across box. Again, beautifully carved wood, silver, I'm sorry, platinum clasps, a little platinum lock, and hands you a key to that as well. I take the profit items and, and thank Namfrudel. Um, and, and insert the key into the lock and uh, open it. So you you open the, the, the you open it and inside you find a, a very well um, cushioned interior with another small smaller box inside and that you recognize immediately as, as his artisan tools. Um, and is there anything else in the box? It, underneath, you find his journal. Fantastic. Um, Cobblefoot's personal uh, artists and kits and, and his personal journal of the vein, I, I say to Namfrudel, these are treasured items. Thank you very much for conveying them to me. So, and you also know that if you ever need to, I mean, this is sim this is a very secure location. If you wanted to leave said items here that while you're not carrying them around or, you know, the box and all... You know, you have your own spot in, in, in her gnomebrary. Don't forget that. Okay, thank you. I will, I will bear that in mind. And I now, as the as the um, the soldiers go up to their to their lodgings, as Namfood all sorts them out, I, I exit the the uh, the rowdy gnome to, to seek out my my fellow adventurers. So Elliot's pretty. Elliot's a little bit busted up here, guys. He's he's noticeably. 
downtrodden. The other gnome is st- for uh, for for uh, sake of saying the other gnome is staying inside of the rowdy gnome. You guys don't see him outside. He didn't just leave. He's still in there. Right. Well, I'm not the type to uh care about anything like that so <laughs> i guess uh dak would just say right elliot are we ready to go to see to uh kalon deterred i am ready Dako. okay right so the 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 five of you will just say that elon stayed with the men the five of you move on down the road and, and over to kalon's office the door is open for you to enter into the seat of the government building not to his office but to walk in again the guards know you um after 30 or so seconds, you see Kalon emerge from one of the back offices. Um, he notices immediately that you are all worse for wear. You've shown signs of combat. He looks specifically at Flargal Snarp and is like, holy shit, what happened to that guy? <laughs> right? Flargal is still somewhat covered in not, I don't want to call it dried blood, but there's stains all over his stuff, right? I mean, this guy looked like he bathed in a river of blood. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, it's, you know, he's... He, and, you know, while his skin and all that may be clean, he's just, he's covered head to toe in crapola. I'm sure there's a story behind all of this. Oh. It's a big story. So I guess we just relay the story of everything what's happened. Um, Are you telling him literally everything what's happened or? I don't think, is there anything we should keep from him? I don't think so. Can I ask a... Uh, <laughs> well, we could we can organize. We could we, we've traveled for a few days, right? So we've we've had a chance to talk about this. I guess we just tell them everything, right? Everything, everything. All right. So, um, what are you are you going to present him with all the things that you found from the the bone to the dirt to the? Is that all going to him? Are you are you turning everything over to Kalon? No reason not to. Yeah, like or, or you know, ask him who we should turn it over to. But yeah, we've got loads of uh, we've got loads of evidence. Uh, we've got these two prisoners, so I don't know if you want to torture them. I mean, <laughs> I'd be very keen to and to join in on that. But uh, if <laughs> these we we found these two guys. <laughs> yep. So his the, the guards grab them, take them in back. They're they're obviously spirited away to some type of of of, of preliminary jail here. So what's their story? What what? So as you relay this, I mean, this is this is a good what hour hour and a half of explanation, right? I mean, this is. He's going to have his own questions. He doesn't question your story as to whether or not it's true at all. Um, especially when Faps kind of, you know, fills him in on some of the backstory as to, you know, yeah, at first I didn't realize that you were sending people to come check on me. Maybe next time you should, you know, have a little more respect than that. But he then understands based on kind of what happened. Um, but, you know, long story short, you know, Kalon is pretty pretty amazed by it and then he kind of looks at you and he says um yeah he says it's 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 been a little bit quiet around here we've just been looking for a young child who's been missing for the last you know four days i yes. suspect we know where that child has been Kalon. Is, is he called is this little kid called jimmy by any chance and you see him right and he just he does one of these he goes god you know he's since that kid came in without his parents from that caravan two years ago, you know he's been a little hard to watch, man. He won't. We keep trying to put him into the chapel as a, uh, as a, um, as an orphan, but he just will not stay there, man. It's, it, the, like the whole town kind of takes care of the poor kid. Mm-hmm. And man, he's been known to disappear for not for that long. We thought something happened to him. Well, something did happen to him. He went on a great adventure. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously throughout that he's he's kind of asking about that because you you left no details out right mm. so, so you, you 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 let him know that little jimmy there w- was able to uh dispatch two of the two of the uh uh cultists by himself yeah so based on what you've seen so again trying to avoid a lot of back and forth i guess he'll cut to the chase of based on what you have seen, and again, this is more of a conversation in private. This is where he wanted that, right? Based on what you've seen, what do you think is the next step? Wow. Do you think we can handle this? Do you, is this is this something that we can keep? Because we want to keep this as quiet as possible. 
and he looks over at uh, at Faps and and nods to him as like, hey, you know, almost like a respect thing for their family. Quiet is surely not the point. We need to return in force to the manor and flush out all traces of this cult. They are killing people. You know, it's imperative, all of the considerations secondary, that we end this infestation. Wow. Well, Elliot the Nom, there is the, as there is the aspect of pay. <laughs> and, and soldiers have to be paid, and we could split that between four people <laughs> instead of more. So it's not, it's not the only factor. <laughs> wow. Um, at, at, at that notice, and I know you're not really saying this out loud in front of him, yeah. Um, but when he mentions, you know, what do you think you should do? You know, Faps immediately says, you know, Elon and I are going back with them if they go back. If you send a different detachment, we're going back with that detachment. I mean, I do, I do think it makes sense to have like a bit of backup, right? It could be, could be a good idea to have a bit of backup uh, if you've got any trusted fellas in the. Uh... Well, I mean, I would want to know if Kalon has ever come across any cultists before in the local area. Like, does he have any prior knowledge of cultists? So, cultists are a unique thing, Dmitriov. We know they're always around. We don't ever see them. Unless you've come across a situation like this. What concerns me the most about this is usually when you flush out the roaches, the roaches leave. You seem to have found a nest. They're defending it. Usually cultists want to stay under the radar. There's, there's, this is... There's something else going on there. It, and I'm not saying it's not, it could simply be a cult, but this is, this is not the traditional act, activities of cults, especially around a, uh, a populated area. You know, when we have cults that are located up in Full Point or wherever else, you'll know they'll, they'll be eight, 10, 12, 15 members and they'll be in the cellars, you know, worshiping whatever it is they choose to worship. You guys have uncovered something and he, you know, from the worm to these monstrous things that are seem to be breaking out of their skin, there's something there that does have to be flushed out. This is not like any cult I've ever heard of. Can, uh, this almost seems semi-organized religion. Can Elliot show him the uh, symbol that he took the tracing of? Yeah, I, 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 I withdraw the, the trace symbol and pass it to Kalon. This so Kalon won't found. even touch it, right? Mm. Kalon, he, he's just... It's its one of these things where it's like now he's... With all the stories that you've sent him, it, he's almost going into superstition mode a little bit. Like, I don't need to touch this stuff. He looks at it. But as you kind of hand it to him, he kind of takes half a step back and just kind of kind of glances at the page sideways as you're kind of holding it sideways. And then you hold it up for him. Um, and I've never I don't recognize that symbol at all. Hmm. You say you found that down in the cave system? Several times, the same symbol repeated in multiple locations. Where sacrifices were being taken, right? Were being eaten, right? Like you said something about they were eaten. They, yeah. they ate the worms. Well, yeah, they were chopping up people. And yeah, they were feeding yeah, the people the to the worms, and they were eating and the worms. The worms. Maybe, um, maybe the country wizard could give you some insight there. I don't know yeah. how deep his knowledge goes into arcane religion. I guess is how I question it. I don't know. That's not my. That's not in my wheelhouse at all. Okay. So, what what do you want from us? I guess I would want to know from you what it's going to take for you guys to go back there and finish this job. What is the size? But of I also don't know what it's going to take to finish this job because we don't know what the hell is truly going on back there. What is so, the size of Victor's standing militia? So he kind of looks at it. He says, guards and, 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 and constables, we can put together maybe 30 to 40. Standing militia, if we were ever assaulted we could put together a force of 200 or so of, of able-bodied men with their own weapons, but I'm not going to send a, I'm not going to call a militia force for something like this. 
Well, I was thinking 200 would just be about right. <laughs> I think we just need a few good men, Elliot. So yeah, so um, so in this in these terms, Elliot, a militia would literally be like calling out to like the able-bodied men, right? Either the father or the firstborn son or firstborn daughter, if um, if capable, would be the one showing up for something like this, and that would usually be like, you know, the barbarians are at the gate type deal. I mean, there's a group of weird people living underground, feeding stuff to worms and then eating the worms and turning into giant monsters with their skin ripping apart because they're so giant. If that doesn't call for the deployment of a militia, then I don't know what does. I'd, I'd be rather the barbarians, to be honest. <laughs> um, oh yeah, this so... is... This is... Uh, this is uh, bad. No, I mean, Elliot's got a great point, right? And Kalon's, Kalon's having this conversation with him. And he says, listen... This is this is the toughest part about being the magistrate, right? Is I've got to make these decisions. If I raise holy hell about what's going on over there, there will be issues in Victa, there will be issues in Full Point, there will be issues going up and down the North Road. If I don't, there could be more disappearances, which would then fall upon my mantle, specifically. So how many guards can you spare? I could send maybe five of my men who I could trust with you, maybe. But this may also... You may... There's another gentleman in town who has people for hire. They've done some work for us as well, similar to you guys, not as... We'll just say that when we need something darker done, that's who we go visit. So, we're, you're not expecting us to pay for that, are you? No, absolutely not. But again, this would have to stay strictly between us. I mean, that goes without saying. I dislike this secrecy. I, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, it's understandable. speak of issues. I think, honestly, I think we need to speak to the country wizard before we make our final decision here are you okay are you okay to give us a couple of hours and we can come back and I'm, I'm not expecting you guys to leave tomorrow this is not a decision that needs to be made lightly by any means you okay. need to talk to the country wizard we may even need even we may even need you to um to send you down to s cadet as well <laughs> s cadet s, s, s cadet s... <laughs> okay <laughs> well yeah i i feel i feel like we we've, we've We've explained what's happened. Uh, yeah. I th I think we need the guidance of the wizard before. And I we think we need out. some payment as well, to be honest, Kalon. So he looks at you and he says, "It's in your box, as promised." Thanks. <laughs> Still not entirely at ease about all this money being in the one box. It's pretty good, isn't it? I think it's pretty good actually, Elliot. <laughs> I I imagine you do, Jimmy uh, Dagger. <laughs> What what happens if something happens to Daka? How do That's we? It's a good question. <laughs> you, you have an axe. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, better make sure nothing happens to Daka, Dimitriov. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I, while I agree that this is not a decision that should be taken lightly, I think it is a decision that should be taken quickly. You know, more disappearances, more killings could happen. Correct. Let's make for the country wizard. And um, uh, do, you know, uh, uh, receive yeah. his counsel. <sighs> Let's yep. go. Okay, so um, you exit. Are you taking? Are you going to take Faps with you guys? Uh, I guess. Yes. What? Yes. Does I mean, he you have... would ask him. Yeah, we can just ask him. <laughs> yeah, we'll just say what do you want to do, Faps, because I mean, obviously we needed him with Kalon, right? But so Faps, Faps will definitely join you if you invite him. That's basically what I'm saying. He's kind of, he's kind of looking at you, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay. We might as well take him. No reason not to. Uh, he can have a little look around. <laughs> All right. So we find ourselves. Are you, can you guys see the map? Yes. Yep. Okay. Good. So you find yourself back at the at the at the. At the uh, at the country wizard's location, right? And Oriolensis is 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 poised behind his desk. You know, his head's down. He's 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 face deep, nose deep in a book. Um, he's got some scrolls open, so on and so forth. Mm. 
-hmm. He looks up immediately and, and right at Flargo. You made it back. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> wow. That's new information. I'm tired of this uh, secrecy between the goblin and the wizard. What is going on here? Why was the goblin given information that we did not have? What, what, what do you mean you didn't expect us back? What do you know, Country Wizard? Well, not that I didn't expect you guys back. I've just, you know, the 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 goblin are known to sneak off and and uh, and just roam from town to town. I just was unsure that he'd actually ever come back. Mm. Oh, forgive me if I gave you the impression that uh, that I thought you would all die. That's not what I was. That's not what I was intending at all. Mm. Yeah, oh yeah. Mm. And and Lee and Garrett kind of walks up behind y'all and is just. <laughs> He's he's kind of snickering under his breath, right? Like he knows that you know Oriolensis is kind of a prick. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, out of character. Did did we have a long rest on our way back from? Oh yeah, you did absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would have any the minute that we had gone into anything else, I would have told you guys to go long rest overnight. Do I have to do that on the sheet? Yeah, you do. You may not have to actually, because you have no spell slots. You still have all of your uh, all of your points yeah, are still there. So I'm yeah, all my dice. We're all good. Yeah. yeah. We are good. Safe. I think Elliot and I think um, Dadel or uh, Flargol have are down on hit points, so it would behoove them to press that button. I I have full hit points. Were yeah, you okay? D D Flargol needs some. Yeah. Yeah. You need you need your spell slots though and stuff, don't you? Yeah. Can yeah. I, I um, did the best. Yeah. Can I get some health potions from this lad? Oh, you, you needed those, huh? You're a bit you're glad I sent those with you. <laughs> I just give him a stern look. <laughs> uh -uh. Mind a few words. So um, he looks over at Flargo. So what'd you find? Well, how inclined I, I, I wouldn't to worry about the company know. you're with. I've, I've got to assume you've had some conversations since you've been gone for so many days. So I'm assuming you've already filled them in. Yeah, uh, we uh, didn't find what we were looking for. What were we looking for? Uh, what were we looking for? Carrots. So Oriolensis kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of cocks a sideways smile, like, "Wow, he didn't tell you guys everything." No, he like didn't. Like one of those looks. He didn't. I mean, he did tell us something, right? I forgot what he told us, though. <laughs> yeah, I've forgotten what he told us as well. <laughs> it was a little bit of forgetting, but also a little bit of, did he tell us? I don't yes, really know. Yes, perhaps. <laughs> Maybe we didn't get the full story, Daka. Yeah. So from my recollection, and Flargo, you can correct me if I'm wrong, you told them everything except for looking for the mirror, correct? Yeah. Oh, the mirror? That sounds familiar, though. Maybe okay, not. so yeah, the mirror in the, or no, the, you it's, think it's, was the mirror in the painting, very right? curious about the mirror in the painting. Sorry, sorry. So Oriol um, it, it, it's it, they, there's a short conversation of you two back and forth. Yeah, that mirror, she she would bring it to town every now and then, and, and, and the markings on it, man, I wanted to get my hands on it and study that thing. There's something behind that mirror. Those markings are not normal markings. Those aren't those aren't normal decorative markings. Interesting. Yeah, we we found a painting of it, but we didn't find anything else. Did anybody met? Did anybody remember my carrots? We did. The, yeah, there was we no didn't. carrots. There we were no try. carrots. Honestly, it, I, if I I bought the carrots, I would not be minded to give you the carrots. I, I I'm astounded that you gave the goblin this secret mission unbeknownst to the rest of us. For what purpose? Well, I can't trust all of you with my needs right away until I get to know you. The trust goes both ways, wizard. Eh, that's granted. I don't need your trust currently. Mm. Well, I mean, did, did was it just was it just uh, Kalon that paid us? Yes. So we don't have to show. The country was a so he looks down at Daedal, he goes, Did you did you get anything else for uh for for um for posterity's sake for for our uh investigations? What do you mean? So he was also remember, he's the one who um who gave you guys the the different jars, things like that to collect things in if you needed them. No. Oh I gave uh, those to Caleb yeah. by mistake. Should I give them to the wizard instead? 
I, I we honestly, you guys got enough. You could say you gave some to both. Right. I got I got like a boar tusk, haven't I? Yeah, same. I've got a boar tusk and a soil sample, but I wrote that I gave them both to Kalon. But yeah, I like I said, there's there, yeah, you I'll guys give, have. I'll give mine, I'll give my stuff to uh, the. Company. I uh, okay, okay. I I have a question for the wizard. And I uh, he, he I... rises. He rises from his chair. He's. He's recognized that this conversation's gone a little bit left of center there, so he's he's going to rise in a little bit more of a respectful tone. And I understand you gentlemen have been through a lot. What can I help you with? I've uh, I've found this rope, um, and I would like to know if you know anything about it. Oh, oh please show it to me. Yeah, so I uh, I pull out the lightweight sack. Uh, with the silken rope, and I show it to Oriolensis. So the minute you pull it out, like his his eyes, they don't grow like big, like oh my god, they grow like oh I've, I I I I think I I know what this is, right? Like familiarity. He pulls the rope from your from the bag. He extends it several lengths in his arms, you know, five six feet at a time. He's rubbing the threads, and he tosses it back to you. It's a nice rope. If you can find the activation word, that's going to do you well. But what would the activation word do? That's a rope of climbing you got there. Whoa. If you find the right word attached to that rope, that specific rope there, and if you look at some of those symbols, some of those symbols are written in Goblin, Those uh, that rope will actually, it, it goes taut 50 feet up and it will knot itself. And you can climb it 50 feet off of the ground without any support. Uh, so I, I show it to Flargal and I say, do you know any of these goblin words? Do I? <laughs> oh yeah, you can read it right away. It's their symbol, their simple goblin symbols. Are you going to tell him the truth? Do you want to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm not, I'm not saying that to be a prick. I just, some, you've been keeping some secrets, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm all open and honest as usual. Okay, so he, he explains to you um, the word, and I don't know this word, I'm just going to tell you it's the goblin word for lift. So you now know the activation word to your... Um, you don't have to remember that, Demi, you just now know it. Okay. And I'll put a rope of climbing into your bag here uh, at the after the end of the uh, episode. What about the dagger, Elliot? Uh, well, b b before that, I approach... Uh, the desk of of, um, of the wizard, and I and I toss a sheaf of bloodied papers uh, onto the desk. Most of them are the cultist notes that we took from the from the scenes, covered with strange symbols. One is the picture of uh, the, the the large symbol we found described upon the ground, and I say, "Wizard, can you read this language? Can you read these symbols? Can you decipher these symbols?" He reaches down onto the desk and picks up his spectacles, right, and throws them over his ears, tilts his hat back a little bit, and and and, and grabs the um, the candle that's on the on the desk itself, and kind of pulls it close to it, and he's looking at it, and he looks at it from different. He flip. He's not afraid to touch these things, right? He's spinning it a little bit. He's trying to figure out if there's an orientation. You know, obviously it's a. A sheet of paper that's longer than it is that it is thinner, so he knows he's 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 assuming that that's the top of the page or the bottom. He keeps flipping it over. I don't recognize these symbols, however, some research on my part here, maybe meeting with S Cadet, maybe I could get some of the knowledge that we need in order to figure out what exactly this is. You say you found this down in the tunnels? We did, yes. We found uh, the large. Uh, symbol that is inscribed upon that paper at several points throughout the tunnels where sacrifices were taking place apparently to stay the emergence of a of a of a worm um, as was described to us by some of the cultists we captured however we did we did encounter worms you know after that and then there's these other documents these other when, uh, pages where did you where sorry. did you find these? When Elliot says you. that, I shall say, speaking of the worms, I've got this, uh, I've got a beak and a tentacle, and uh, what else do I have? A 
Beaker, tentacle, and leech parts. Okay, so I've got, I've got some kind of leechy shit here. <laughs> some mechanical leechy shit? Yeah. So, um, so right away, Lean Gera kind of goes off, comes back with, uh, he just goes over to one of the tables, right? And he comes back with a large, it's not a silver platter, but like a platter, a metal platter. And, um, and, and kind of nods for you to put those items oh, onto that. No, and then he I takes those items back and places them on one of the desks glorious. over here. They've done this a defend. lot, right? This is not something that is, you, the minute you started to pull things out, man, he he went over, just picked it up, comes back over, says, yeah, just kind of put it there. And then he takes it. So people have brought things, um, people have brought things to this man before, obviously for research, specifically of uh, animal, bird, you know, you know what I mean? Like dissection, things like that. Hmm. So uh, uh, Oriolensis looks back at Elliot again. So these other documents here, these other pages, and they, they have much more writing on them, Elliot. They have some symbols, uh, but not like the large symbol. In fact, none of the symbols like around the edges match any of the symbols that are on those documents. Where did you say you found these? The rituals that were taking place in the catacombs had a religious bent. Cultists, acolytes, priests. Uh, on 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 one of these priests, uh, I think it was a priest or an acolyte. One of these it was people, the priest. Yeah, they were priest. the priests. Uh, I I found these documents um, in his robes. So he 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 walks over to one of his um, one of his bookshelves, and he grabs a um, a rather large leather bound, very thin but leather bound folder, if you will. Comes back over, opens it up on the on the desk. The folder is empty, and he puts the pages onto that folder, almost like a, a you know a scientist or a professor would put in a, a pages that they needed to study in the future and needed to keep them all in one place. And he leaves it open in front of you all. Are you leaving these in my care? I will leave them with you. If you can divine some meaning from them, it would be very much appreciated. I'll see what I can, uh, definitely I'll see what I can come up. And you say you found these on the cultists, he points to these, and you found this, this symbol, and this symbol was the same symbol that you found on the ground at all locations? Barring minor discrepancies due, due to the creation of the symbol, I would imagine, yes. Very, very interesting. This is amazing. This is exactly, and he looks over at Flargo, this is exactly the kind of stuff that I was looking for. I, I, I'm astounded at the fact that we found an active, and immediately, I mean, he, he he goes on like from a scientist point of view. There's actually an active cult some here that's that's close to us. And what you found is simply, can you, do you understand the scientific ramifications of being able to take something, eat it, and then turn into something? It's, this is this is unheard of as far as I'm concerned. I've, this is it, it doesn't seem to be magical in its in its makings. This is something very very animal based, very very meat based, very cult. It's I don't even know where to go with this. I understand that people are dying. Yeah, and, and, and when you say that, right, it kind of shocks him back into it. And, you know, he looks over at, um, at, at, uh, at Faps, and I'm sure at some point through your conversations, you've conveyed that Faps lost his brother, potentially, at least one good man, and, um, and that you found body parts of many others. And he just looks down at Elliot and, Granted, granted, and he almost, you know, he's not apologizing, but he's recognizing that he is a very methodical, scientific man. Are you planning, are you, are you going back? Are you, what? What, what do you think we should do? Well, science demands you go back. Or well, somebody, what? not necessarily you. Science demands this is investigated. <laughs> If people have died, obviously, and he looks down at Elliot and nods. If people have died, we obviously don't want that any further. But we also must learn what this is for the sake of either A, corralling it, or B, learning how to defeat it. I intend to destroy the cult. Learning is secondary. But Granted, it I, does cost I, extra, I, 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 so I would, we'll learn would, what we can. <laughs> I would pay you to bring back as much knowledge as possible eradicate it if you must and in fact i would say eradicate it but bring back as much this is not something i have ever seen and i have traveled very wide 
Mm. If it so happens that we have the opportunity, very well. But primarily, we are going to, have to destroy this thing, not to not to bring back. I am. I'm going to dump my. I got some samples. I've got grass, wood, and uh, the boar tusk and stuff. I'm just going to dump the samples samples on his desk. Okay. Right. Uh, once again, depending on what it is, so. The dirt samples, the grass samples, uh, you brought leaves, you brought small twigs of branches. Yeah. Um, you brought a whole bunch of stuff. Um, like once again, Lean Gary goes back and he either grabs uh, wooden boxes that you could contain those samples in or um, other metal plates if there's something of a, of a uh, synthetic value, if you will. I mean, and, and as you guys are, I mean, it's Oriolensis is very impressed. You can see he's very impressed in all of the things you, you chose to bring back from this. You didn't just treat this as a hack and slash type thing. You gentlemen have done a phenomenal job with this. This is, I, I he's just taken aback. Whatever you need from me, if I can do it, it is yours. Do you, do you think, what does this I mirror? I want the poisoner's kit. I want to, uh, that's what I want from you. Say again? I want a poisoner's kit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I want to make poison traps. <laughs> I want to make poison. Um, Oriolensis can put together something for you like that, yes. Um, with it's... certain with certain uh, poisons, both uh, plant-based and... Um... Oh, I can add that to my inventory that I have, like, a poison. Yeah, just put it, I'll, I'll figure out what to add, but yes. How about some healing potions? We could we could do with some of those. Yeah. I'm not a potioner, I'm a poisoner. No, but, but no, you, but no, you no. get false-fed healing out. potions. <laughs> I have used all my healing potions. He can, he can afford to give each of you two again. Oh, um, he'll restock your, your supplies. Elliot, he'll give you, um... He's gonna give you an additional one. As you explained to him that you were actually <laughs> responsible for, you know, you, you've conveyed why you need more potions, basically. Oh, you use the potions. Da, 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 da. I suspect uh, that the wizard is just trying to placate me, but I take the additional potion. Uh, he's definitely us. trying to placate you, without a doubt. I um, I wanna, I wanna ask you if you think uh, the mirror has anything to do with this cult. The mirror has to. At this point, I did not. I had. I, I. I. I swear to you that I had no knowledge of any types of cultist activities. The mirror very much piqued my interest. I had tried to trade for the mirror from her for many years. I had offered her gold. I had offered her services, and it, I, I simply wanted to study it. I even asked to just borrow it for several months. She would never give it up, and it was always on her person. Speaking of mirror, um, can I also have a new set of robes? <laughs> Speaking of mirrors, <laughs> exactly. Where did that come from? Look at himself um, in the mirror. So he doesn't have any robes your size, coincidentally. Okay, that's it. But you could definitely find more robes here in town. Yes, you we could. You could magically, we could magically adjust them to be my size. <laughs> Yeah, again, you could find them from somebody here in town. <laughs> but yes, you could easily find replacements for your... There will be seamsters and seamstresses that are that are eager for your gold, Flargo Snarp. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> is, that, is that all your... Is that everything with Oriolensis? Bye now. Uh, I mean, I got my poisoner's kit. I'm good. The dagger. Do you not want to show him the dagger, Elliot? I'm not showing him the dagger. No. Not showing him the dagger. The brooch? Uh, I, I think I know what the brooch does, right? Mm. It's pretty. It's, it's pretty. It's pretty. It heals people more. Uh, I, I, I take a sidebar with Dmitriov. Do you think I should show him the dagger and the brooch? I don't see why not. I mean, he's not going to steal it from you. He, like... He might give you an indication of what exactly it is. Um, I am curious about what they're talking about. Can I try to eavesdrop? 
<laughs> you could just oh, <laughs> you thought... drop where you're gone. Just don't you run come away. Back in real no. easily. You could just say you were never gone. That's fine. <laughs> I ve I very well. Yeah, you make a good point. I no I... no. I wanna use I wanna I wanna, I wanna stop Elliot from showing it to. Ah, uh, okay. So, unless you physically stop Elliot, you can't stop him because this is just a simple conversation, right? Yeah, but that's what I'm talking about. Like, if if Elliot and Timmy are talking about this, I want to interject and tell Elliot to not show it Okay, to so we'll, I... we'll do a quick sidebar, a very simple conversation. Oriolensis is literally looking at everything on this desk, right? I, I noticed yeah. Flogglesnob, as I conversed with Dimitrov, I noticed Flogglesnob lingering around, sort of jiggling about from one foot to the other a little bit. And I look at him, <laughs> do you have something to contribute, Flogglesnob? <laughs> I, uh, I whisper in uh, Elliot's ear, don't show it to him. Don't show it to the wizard. I, I whisper back, for what reason? I don't trust him. He seems to be way too self-centering and self-serving. Wow, oh, there's a statement. <laughs> well, very well. I'm, I, I'm, my... I'm only, I'm, I, I only, uh, I mainly like am, am, am invested with these guys because like I need to, uh, I, I need to like have some, get some standing, right? I must admit, this was my instincts. I will not show the brooch and the dagger to the wizard. At this point, what's your, wis what's your wisdom check for? This point, I'm, I'm just. I just thought I'd roll a dice. And just, at this point, Dacker's <laughs> Dacker works out that these three are having a sneaky conversation, so he does a forward roll <laughs> and pops up. <laughs> 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 I jump, I jump, startled. <laughs> Back here. And, and says, and the sweet. "Hello, boys." <laughs> I think maybe okay, you should. So, what's the um, what's the consensus with what they do here? I think you should show him this shit. I think we can trust him. He, I think we can definitely trust him. He, you know, he's like Kale on the third. He said we can trust him. I've, you're, I've you're not the wisest guy work. in the world, are you, Ducka? I'm, I'm not bad is... for wiseness, oh. but I'm really bad for intelligence. <laughs> I, I, uh, you're not the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree with you're the more direction. Like I disagree with the direction Kalon is taking with his whole affair. Uh, so the fact that Kalon trusts him does not fill me with great confidence. I will keep the items hidden. Mm, okay. Good. But then, like, <clears throat> if why are we pursuing this whole quest if we don't trust them? Because I trust, people are missing. I trust people are Kalon dying. The third. And I trust. We the have to do something about that. Okay, like so you we... can trust people to like do the good. Like we we trust that we need to help them do the right thing, but we don't trust them with all kinds of information about all kinds of findings that we make because okay. like so... it's not it's in this guy's interest to like let Bravo. us Bravo. have a super good magical item. Yeah. So what was your intentions with the mirror? No, as I said, like, I might... Well, I whisper what I whispered to Elliot, to Dimmy, that, uh... Like, I don't trust this guy, I'm just... I need to increase my standing here, I'm a goblin. Like, I, I'm, I've traveled far and come to this town, and I need to increase my standing, not only, like, within the community as a whole, but especially, like, with the magic users. And do you have any so, specific uh, reason? That was the quest that I was given. And do you have any... Personally from him. I'll be right back, boys. Give a, Keep talking and then tell me what you want your decision to be. Mm. And do you have any specific reason that we don't know about to not trust him? No. <laughs> so, I, I just don't get I mean, it. You've, like... you've, interacted, you've interacted with him as well, right? He's not... He's a knobhead. He's not... Yeah. yeah, he's, he's a country he's, he's wizard. Not one that instills trust. Right? But then, why would you? Yeah. Why would you be happy to deliver him the mirror, but not show him the dagger? Exactly. Mm. 
makes sense. Because that was that was a specific quest and request asked by him. Like that was something that he knew of and could tell more of. And also a quest I was given that would increase my standing if I completed it. Whereas this dagger, he knows nothing of it. And I think it's better that he doesn't. I think if there's like more to the magic than what I've already discerned on my own, then we can find out that from that on our own and benefit from it instead of like this guy finding it out, taking it from us or purchasing it, purchasing it like lowballing us on an offer and going off with something more valuable than like, you see my reasoning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, go on. Like, oh, there's a difference between an official quest that increases my standing and a non, like, and just a voluntarily handing something over. Okay. I just want to make you aware that, like, all the secrecy has kind of led to us, or me, kind of mistrusting you as mm. much as you mistrust the wizards. So, just bear that in mind moving forward. That... I'll tell you everything that I know. Okay. I, I, I have not enjoyed the secrecy. However, we are brothers in arms. Flag or snap, you know, I, I, I appreciate your input, your counsel. However, you know, the, the, the overwhelming you know, weight of thought seems to lie with Daka and, and Dmitriov and you know, I, I, I will I will do as they advise and I will show the wizard the knife. But they're and... they're fools. Well, I whispered to him. They, well, that, that is, isn't he? We've, we've, wow. seen, his, we've seen his intellect uh, score, but but no, non, nonetheless, I do trust their judgment. I as I trust yours, uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I'll go with them and I'll show the wizard the the dagger and the brooch and see what okay, he Okay, Elliot, Elliot, do me a favor and give me a perception check. Oh, he's gonna steal them, isn't he? Oh no, I should have listened to Flag or <laughs> No, no, he's not gonna steal them. Steal them. This steal is them. he won't steal them. Highly perceptive. Okay, so, no, this isn't necessarily... Remember, again, I'm not... When you have things like this in a non-confrontational environment, this is more about what I what you kind of glean from this. This isn't a tough check, right? So, Oriolensis, even though he comes off as a prick, right, he's very analytic. He just... He doesn't seem like the kind of person who has a lot of close friends, right? Because he just, he says what's on his mind and he's very focused and he, but he does recognize when he fucks up socially, right? Which is when he nodded to you, when you had said, hey, people have died, right? Like you brought him back to reality that the whole world isn't like a friggin' beaker, right? Um, you feel comfortable with him from that standpoint. You, you feel that he's being genuine, at least. It, it's either that or he's the world's greatest actor. I mean, it, it's, it, it doesn't take much to recognize that, that the minute that you said what you said, it snapped him right back into reality. He's like, shit, that's right. I mean, I've got to remember that there, there's, there's a human or there's a personage factor here. So you're going to show him the dagger? I am, and the brooch. I pass them both. I slide them both across the desk to him. What do you make of these wizards? We retrieve them from the catacombs. So he, he looks at the brooch and he immediately recognizes it as what, what Flargal recognized it as. It is a symbol of, of, of healing and the healer. It's not, a, um, it's not something uh, that specifically offers healing, is, if that makes sense, the symbolization behind it. It's something that a healer would wear in ancient times. Um, he does recognize that um, he's looked at you and says, have, have you, you, you carry the healing gifts, correct? I am a disciple of the chief engineer. But through him, I restore vitality to those in need. And the last time that you did this, it, was it any different than times before while you were, while this was in your possession? Yes, it was. The brooch did something, but I can't remember what it was. It doubled your healing of yourself, Elliot. That was it, exactly. Yes, I remember now. That was it. <laughs> so he looks down and he goes, curious. He says, uh, you know, that I've, I've seen these before, oftentimes on healers, oftentimes in times of war, and they've granted some type of a... 
I don't know if to call it religious or magical, but we'll say a boost to one's healing gifts. Sometimes in the healing of others, sometimes in the healings of oneself, sometimes in both. I would encourage you to continue to ex explore, you know, how this interacts with you specifically. You've you've seen no negative effects. Uh, other than memory loss, no. <laughs> <laughs> then I then I, then I would I would glean that that this is something that 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 uh, this is something that that is of, of benefit to you. Yes, it is. Yes, yes. I I I I agree. I should continue to investigate its usage. I can say no no more other than that. Only from my my finite knowledge of of the religious side of things, I'm more of a, 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 a more of a thinker, more of a. I place less in in faith than I do in in uh, study, if you will. More of a thinker. I question your choice of words. Are you implying that the religious arts do not involve thinking? No, I, I, I imply that I don't have as much of a knowledge base on the religious arts as I do those magical and 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 enchanted. Very well. <laughs> You're fucking trying to slip this guy up. <laughs> did you say so you showed him the dagger as well i do okay so the dagger he looks at he kind of spins it in his hands a little bit it's a very sharp dagger as we mentioned um he looks at it, he goes this is not this is not meant to be a weapon i have seen these as well and he he casts his hands over it a few times give me a um give me a dadle you and elliot please both give me a arcane check please arcana to just to see if you can tell what he's doing. I oh. have no idea what he's doing. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, you just don't know. What is this wizard nonsense that I see before me? Exactly, which is fine. So, Dado, you ascertain that he's doing some type of a detect magic. You can't be sure because you've never seen the country wizard do it himself. And everybody does it a little bit different. But he's just doing some simple things to detect charms, detect magic. He's looking it over, you know, the the uh, different uh, side. This does not look like a weapon. This this is some type of a, and he looks at the um, he looks at the uh, uh, the inscription on it. Give me one sec. Let me see exactly what I told you said on it. So he, he, he looks at the inscription and he says, safety for the owner of the gem. And he says, this is another, this is another thing that I, I would keep on you. Test. I want to cast the tech thoughts on the camera wizard. Go ahead. Yeah, he needs to make a saving throw. Or you need to do, or I don't know. Oh, it's what? not rude. Do David. I roll this? No, I, mean, I do. He doesn't know that I'm detecting his thoughts. Okay, so um, you don't wait, get. Wait, are you detecting my thoughts? No. No, no the country wizard. But I just rolled a saving throw. <laughs> I know. Well, that's because I had you selected. I just okay, rolled it real okay, quick. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, stay out of my head, goblin. <laughs> stay out of my head, yeah, rat. I am. Um, you don't get anything from him. It's, it's a steel trap. It's a bar. It's, it's a door. You try to, you try to get in there with your newfound powers, um, your newly discovered powers. And it's as if, you know, the, the wave has crashed against the sea break. Mm. So uh, he looks down at Elliot and he says, there are some guardian type properties to this protection type properties to this there is no specific way to find out exactly what it does until it does it for you if that makes sense um but typically with these types of items that are more uh ritual not ritual that's the wrong word because i don't want to send you guys down the cultist path that are more uh for show it's more of a show dagger right it's a piece. It's a piece of art. He said these items weren't made for battle. They're they're they were they were crafted and cast on for a reason. 
and there's some protection magic going on here of some kind. I couldn't tell you exactly what. Very well. Thank you for your input, wizard. I appreciate that. You just use a spell slot for that. Mm. Oh. Yeah, Elliot, or Elliot, I'm sorry, uh, Flargle Snarp did. Yeah. I mean, we're in we're in the city, like, before we're back out, heading out, we're gonna... Yeah, um, you'll probably be taking a night's sleep night's there, uh, <laughs> Dimitri, yeah. out before you leave again, but good call. <laughs> I mean, so what's next, I gentlemen? Before, I thought about that before I did it, that's why I did it. Because, I, like, just, I'm not gonna I just think it stuff. would be really rude, right, because it's VSM. So like, surely well, he just... doesn't know. But like, surely he, he notices he that you sat no, no. there so, and you're no, going. So for his, mm -hmm. so, no, um, <laughs> so this is something that he doesn't have to use. This is part of his feat, Jim. Oh, right. Yeah, oh, this okay. one doesn't require any. Um, in fact, he doesn't even require a spell slot. Now that yeah. now that he's mentioned it, he can use it as a spell slot once he's used it. But he gets to use it once a day. Right. Okay. Well, that makes so a lot more sense than just spell. fucking casting a spell, because that's like that'd be like you know a wizard would be like, "What the oh, fuck yeah, are no, you no, doing?" No. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Okay. That makes sense then. Yeah. So Jeez. in fact, hold on. Let me give you your spell slot back just in case. Thanks. Um. So I suggest to uh, my fellow travelers that it's time to leave, and I, I beckon them outside. So Oriolensis once again just says, "Gentlemen, if you are planning on heading back there." Any knowledge again, and he looks down at Elliot respectfully. Any knowledge again is is is, is greatly appreciated. I will do my best on these on these documents that you brought back. And he um, he pats the top of the closed now journal, the closed a uh, uh, folder, and do my best to try to to decipher anything that I can from these that may help you should you return and need to once again go back. Hopefully you will find the answers you're looking for there already, and it's it's a moot point. Our questions can be answered only by dead cultists. <laughs> Daka likes you now. <laughs> Except if we've captured them, then we don't have them. Then, then we don't. Then we no. don't. No, 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 no. <laughs> if Flagel puts them to sleep, then, uh, then they will never <laughs> die. <laughs> they will never die. <laughs> okay. Oh, you know, I know I shouldn't have shown you how. Well, so, so I, yeah, I, I guess I'd we... like to leave and then discuss, you know, as a group as to what we do next. Yeah, yeah, I okay, guess perfect. We'll have that discussion to... real quick. Yeah. I, Isla needs to uh, go out. Go ahead. Sh should we take a break then? Five yeah, minutes let's take our break. break. That's actually a good point for it. Cool. Definitely. Yeah, cheers. Fantastic. Right. So, um, so as the as the end of the break. I shall I shall split the YouTube video. That's a good idea. This is an idea from Jack Bull. So yeah, we'll we'll, we'll split the YouTube videos now. So thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.